Oh, it would really help if I had the right game up. Yep, there we go. So this is the first tree. Um, I've had this in my Steam account for a couple of years now, I think. No idea what it's about. It just looked gorgeous. Um, I'm actually going to turn my background music off. Uh, just so we can we can vibe. So so if you don't know, Beltane is um, it's a festival of fertility and nature. Well, like paganism and everything is mainly about nature and stuff anyway. So I wanted to play kind of like a you know naturey type game. It's only because I popped into Destiny uh, for a bit and shenanigans ensued that I went into that. So we're going to just see how far we can go in this. Uh, and then I'm going to have a nap because I am 80 years old um, and I'll be back this evening with some drunk raids with the guys let's go New, uh, let's do options graphics nice subtitles please okay cool new game I think I get to play as a fox which is super cute I like foxes. I like all animals. I'm a, I'm an animal person. Meow shush. So pretty. I love this kind of art style as well. Like the high contrast. Oh, oh, okay, that moves weird. Are you awake? I thought I heard you get up. Yeah, I'm awake. Sorry, I just can't sleep. Are you thinking about, about him? Yeah, a bit. You should get back to sleep, my love. I'm fine. No, no, it's okay. What else is on your mind? <sighs> I don't know. It seems weird. But I had one of the most vivid dreams of my life. I oh, saw a fox on a snowy mountain, just looking confused and worried. Those eyes, I can't get those eyes out of my head. She was running in the windy snow, looking for something. Do you think it has to do with, with you and what's been going on? I don't know. It was just a dream, Rachel. They're not meant to make sense. A lot's happened the past couple days, that's all. Well, if you're not going to sleep anyway, you should tell me. I want to hear. All so right. this is obviously one of those narrative type games. Can I, can I crouch? How do I... Yeah, this is obviously one of those narrative type games um, that there's like a metaphor and stuff. At least that's what I'm picking up so far. Um, this will be interesting. As I said, I genuinely don't know anything about this. Uh, I knew I got it for a reason because I like the sound of it, but how do I get up? There's obviously a way for me to leap. Also, is that thing double jump? Oh, okay. Yep, you can double jump. Right. That's cool. Um, said I, I love. You know this kind of simplistic art style. It just feels cozy. Look at me. I'm a fox. I 
not supposed to go that way, so I'm going to go up here first. <gasps> I have little poop birds in this room. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll double back. I'll go this way first. Maybe I'm supposed to go back the long route. Woo. Woo. I love the sound of crunching through snow as well. It just looked like there was something cool over here. Oh, it's literally just a picnic. Okay. That's... Are we in the Diablo of Pass? Yeah, that's the, um, where those Russian students got killed in an avalanche. And it was like a massive mystery for decades. And they only recently solved it this year. Uh, thanks to Disney's Frozen. very 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 open world I saw some things about there being multiple endings so I don't know how much exploring there there is oh like there can be um, if it has many secrets and stuff I'm, I'm just going to um, just just try to play through it rather than like completionist Definitely things over here. Hey. Hey. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, don't rain. It's raining here today, which is horrible. It's been lovely and sunny. Fox looked high and low. Searching for any sign of her cubs. Points of light showed the way to this ancient tree. It was as if each one had a story to tell, all their own. The land was trying to tell my story, too. I felt like I was right behind her the whole time. She actually opens her mouth and she's running, that's so cute. <gasps> Bunnies! Bunnies, bunnies, bunnies. Does it run straight to me? I don't think I can actually get the bunnies. No, no. <laughs> that would be a little bit twisted in this, uh, obviously, meant to be quite a heartwarming game. Yes, I, I was saying it's, it's been lovely and sunny the last few days, um, but today of all days, it's horrible and bleak and cast over. That's okay because I'm in here with you guys. Uh, oh, okay. 
a kid, did you ever do show and tell in your class? Yeah, I, I think I only did it once when I was in the fourth grade. You know how my life was. Also, a little um, toy boat. I wanted to show my class what helped pass the time and distract me. So I brought a dozen paper cranes I had made. I think I told everyone how badly I wanted to be a bird and fly, embarrassingly enough. Don't be embarrassed. Every kid wants to fly. You say, who doesn't? For me, it was another toy for my dad a wooden boat. I remember guarding it so carefully in my hands as I walked into class. When I sat down, a group of boys immediately made fun of it. They asked which trash can I found it in, or why an ugly log was my favorite toy. When I got up, I didn't even want to tell them my dad had carved it. I said it was a joke gift my friend had given me. Kids can be so cruel. Mm. Some of them are. I shouldn't have let them get to me, but it did. It's amazing we bounced back at all. Can you talk about this? Did your dad make this? My cousins had um, like a little wooden plane like this in in their bedroom, but it was like a light, and I always thought it was so cool. Uh, like it had a, a light bulb. Where? I can't remember where the, the light bulb attached to, but it yeah, it was like a. Um, ceiling lamp, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Do you remember what my dad did for a living? Wasn't he like a lumberjack? <laughs> That's one way of putting it. If wood was a canvas, then a carving knife was his paintbrush. I have a even train after set working like that. a fifty-hour week, even after his hands were more splinters than skin, he would bring home the nicest piece of Alaskan weeping cedar and make me toys. Mm. That wooden train was the first toy I can remember, and I loved it. I just knew from a young age I was going to be. A lumberjack, like my father. Yeah, that's one of my first toys as well. I remember I took it everywhere with me. I've still got it at home. Um, it's got my, uh, like, the bit that you pull, it's got a string attached to it, and uh, the handle that you pull is uh, my, my name carved out in wood. I love it. I love doing any woodwork. Um, my granddad was a carpenter. Uh, and then my my other granddad, uh, he was actually a metal worker, but he did all the carpentry as well. So we've got all their tools, um, and my mum and dad made sure that I did those woodwork when I was younger, just because I loved it. Um, nothing is better than the smell of oh smell of wood, like freshly carved wood, uh, fre oh freshly oiled wood. It's amazing. Some wood that I work with. Um, yeah, this is some. It's uh, <laughs> I got this when I was in Tasmania, and it's oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's pine. It's a type of pine. Huon pine. That's it. And. I cannot describe how amazing it smells. Cats go mad for it. Um, and I carved a uh, cookster out of it uh, a few years back. I got um, like a wood turned blank. Um, and so I went to Tasmania five years ago now. Whoops. Oh, I'll wait to get them. Uh, and I carved it not long after. Every time I open my kitchen cupboard, because it, it's a cookster is like a coffee mug. So every time I open my mug cupboard, it's all oh, you can smell, and it's, oh, it's the most gorgeous smell in the world. Oh, jump, 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 jump.
doing? I really want to do some uh, carpentry again, but I can't because of my thumb. I'm thinking more and more as the days goes on that it might be broken, but there's nothing else the doctors can do aside from putting it in a thumb brace like this anyway. So. Somehow they could tell I was different. Oh, it made a little tank. Far away I lived. They called my dad a sourdough. I was a blabbermouth as a kid, telling my dad stories I made up for hours. But after that show and tell, I didn't tell him much anymore. He <gasps> didn't know exactly what there. was wrong, but his best guess was that the toys he carved weren't cool enough. He carved me a tank and tried to tell me what it was like to be in a real tank as a serviceman. I didn't know your dad was in the military. Yeah, in the army. The sad thing is that I'd pretty much forgotten until just now. There's so much I still don't know about him. I'm sorry. He knows how much you love him. So cool. You're going to see him again soon and have some closure, I'm sure. Oh, I'm not liking the way this story's going. It's so cool. It kind of looks like an ice sculpture. There's, there's something up there. one of these ducks as well my favorite oh and again I still have this um don't no I don't have it here um I've, I've got what I call my memory box and I think I've, that's back at my parents house but so um it's like a wooden slide I had loads of wooden toys as a kid um and it's, it's like this wooden slide type thing and you put this it was a little yellow duck on it and uh, it would rock back and forth, and as it rocked, like it, its back leg would move, so then its front leg would, you know, go forward because of gravity and stuff, and it would just slowly walk down like that. And it was the coolest thing ever. Oh, I loved it so much. Um, my little yellow duck. <gasps> oh no! Yeah, one, my my parents. Um, Kind of preferred wooden toys in any case, um, but my my mum always said that she wanted me and my brother to have toys that she knew my granddad would have made. You know, like up at the same standard kind of thing. Uh, like for I think it was my 16th birthday, might have been my 18th. So on my 16th and my 18th, she gave me this jewellery box. And her dad made her a jewellery box when she was younger. Um, if you couldn't guess, he, he died when she was a teenager, but you know. He still looked very much alive for me. They, they uh, our, our parents made sure that we, we knew our grandfathers. Uh, yeah, she spent years looking for the perfect jewellery box. Um, that she knew would have been up, up to my granddad's standards. I 
see shiny things over there, so I don't think I've been there. I'll go here. bunnies. stuff over here. Let's get everything in this area first. Yeah, that's the plane. I must have literally just missed something. Yeah, I did. these I'm just taking the long way around to make sure I don't miss anything. Sound volume is a bit high. I say as I think I'm like halfway through this game now. I don't know. I don't know how uh, how how long this is. And it's like the tank. I need to get on the ridge again. Can I roll this, please? <gasps> yes, I can! Yes. Oh no, it's just a ball. Oh, I thought it was like, the, uh, like a snowball. Ooh. 
was. I've been in one of those school buses once, like the, the American ones. Funny enough, when I was in America, uh, they are terrifying. The seats are like plastic and you just, you go around a corner and you just go flying off. The older I got, the more I withdrew. I asked myself, why talk to anybody anyway? Why bother when I'm happy by myself? I started drawing a lot. Mostly animals I saw in the woods by my home. I then imagined designing my own hideouts with things like TVs and pantries full of chips and cookies. I think that idea of leaving home and drawing blueprints started my career. I found a lot of solace in that. I'm not surprised, but I did the same thing, you know? There is something special about having a place to call your own. And now look at us. Well, if you count renting in an overpriced city. <laughs> it's as close as we can get for now. No, I'm the same. I always making uh, hideouts and stuff at like my local park or um, in my room. I would find anywhere to. Ah oh, no! Fox no! Damn it! Uh, I'd, I'd find anywhere to. Cool. My cozy corners, I'd call them, uh, to hide away, uh, including under my bed. So I used to like have all my boxes at kind of at the front of my bed, and there'd be a little hole, and I'd squeeze through it. Um, and like I had fairy lights in there. Um, I'd have like cushions and blankets and stuff, and it was just big enough for me to like lay there really. Um, but it's where I'd go like, if, if things were getting too overwhelming or if I just, you know, needed oh, um, some, some of my own space. Whoa! Good thing I'm an immortal fox. Uh, yeah, like, I love my family and being around them, but I, I'm very much one who needs my own space. And I've been craving that since I was yay high. Um. Okay. So more lights down there. Is that a thingy? I'm not sure if that's just... I think that might be just a reflection on the cliff side. Stay there, bunnies, I'm not coming near you. Did I see some down here? No. I don't know why I'm leaning to get to peek around the corner. Maybe it's not just a very short game. Oh, nice. Oh, music change. Where are we going now, buddy? No, it's harder to see the shiny lights here, though. My teenage years were full of sketching, angst, and trouble. I wasn't popular or unpopular. 
maybe just forgettable. I guess that gave me a sense of freedom. So I hung out with crazy kids, doing crazy things, even though I mostly just watched the chaos ensue. That's being a teenager. We did it all. Put fireworks in mailboxes. Oh, no, didn't do that. People's garages. Break windows of the barber shop in Anchorage. My dad was furious, but he was so busy working, he couldn't do much to stop me from going out. I think being an adult means there's no one to stop you making hard decisions. He had to make a living, and he couldn't be in two places at once. Yeah, I realize that now. But at the time, I was sure he was more interested in growing his business than what was going on with me. Come on, there we go. There we go. I saw a thing. I saw a thing. There we go. Okay, so it's this. Is that a thing? Oh, this is a thing. Ah, CCTV camera. Oh, what's this? Baseball caps. Oh, police car. You know, I, I uh, was a weird kid and I hung out with the other weird kids. Um, all of whom I'm still very, very close friends with to this day. Oh, naughty boys. Um, we never did anything bad. We just hung out and were weird. Wasn't there a thing over here? Didn't... Wasn't there a gate? You know, when the light gates? I swear I saw one. Oh, yeah, it's here. Dink. He was working another late night and my friends were over, saying how bored they were and how they had come all the way out to my house for nothing. One of yeah, them those are bad friends. that old, ugly, beyond belief truck was still in the garage and how we should take it for a spin. I was only 15, so I kind of fought it for a while. The next thing I knew, we were careening around the mountain path, rocks spitting onto the sides of the cliff while my dad's cringeworthy bluegrass blared out the speakers. I drove while my friends were in the back of that yellow and purple truck, throwing beer bottles and trash at anything remotely interesting. Felt like I was soaring in the air with borrowed wings. But all good things have endings. A cop outside of Eagle River pulled us over after he saw us in a bottle rocket into someone's yard. What followed was a long night of talking to disappointed adults and feeling smaller than ever. I wonder if this is actually like the narrator or you know one of the game devs. Oh, what's this? Oh, I don't know, but <gasps> super jump. Oh, that's cool. I don't want this again. Ah. No, stop it. Okay, I can fly though, apparently. Um, hello. There you go. Get it! There you go. There you go. I want my butterfly bows again. Come back, friends. There we go. <gasps> no! I did that automatically. You know when you're in a video game and you're running, you just you just jump all the time. It's just 
it's really hard not to. Ah, I nearly made it. Blah, blah, blah. Didn't know whether to say made it or nailed it, so I nailed it. <gasps> no! Oh. I, I know there isn't full damage in this game, but every single time my, my stomach is in my in my chest. Oh, there's another oh, wow, this is so cool. Can I get up here? It's always worth a look see. Oh, this game is just so cozy looking. Okay, I don't think there's anything down there. There's the orange and purple truck. Well, purple and orange. After he drove me home from the police station, I blew up at him, saying how I never wanted to be like him, how oh, I was going to be it. someone and leave that hick icebox for good. He just looked forward at the road with tired eyes. I took out that bluegrass tape from the cassette deck and chucked it out the window. In my sage teenage wisdom, I thought I had proved the ultimate point. But my dad had a different idea. He slammed the brakes, slowly bowed his head while gripping the steering wheel, and finally looked at me. All he said, like it was a polite request, was, Make this right. I sat there in silence, fuming, but I eventually got out and combed every square inch of the woods, muttering profanity after profanity. I found it thirty minutes later, near a small waterfall off the road. I went back to the truck, put the wet tape back in, and sure enough it worked. Oh, for goodness sake. We didn't sake. speak another word to each other the rest of the night. Wow, I knew you were a crazy teenager, but... It's hard to believe, isn't it? It surprises me, too. It's like I didn't really know who that kid was back then. I bet my dad thought the same thing over and over. It's almost like he was saying, make this right to himself, more than to me. No, bullshit. Urgh, so hard to judge the distance. If you don't do the double jump quick enough, it doesn't let you do it. Yep. No! Calm, relaxing game. Calm, relaxing game. But it requires me jumping, which negates the calm, relaxing bit. I just, I just want the shiny thing. Calm, 
come on! Gotcha, there you go. Right. Now I have to use this to get uh, up here, I think. Okay. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I don't think I actually need to get up there. Um, it's just a case of the, the truck is there. Yeah, but just in case, you know. Yes, there's a thing! Yes! Doop. You know what? I respect that your dad has a purple and orange car like that. Very bright, very bold. best be able to go through that. It's on my bucket list to drink from my waterfall. Oh, I'll do that, didn't I? Uh, I very nearly did when I was in Tasmania. There's so many waterfalls. It's gorgeous. Um, but Our family came up behind us, and I didn't want to have a bad impression in the kitchen because I <laughs> you weren't supposed to get that close to the waterfall. Um, and I was like, Oh no, so close! So, these earphones are not the most comfortable, burrowing through into my skull. Bar of a shop. Yeah, why are there so many purple butterflies? Oh, okay. I probably need some of them for here. Oh, they can accumulate! Right, okay. That's cool. I'll get the waterfall one first, then that one and that one. I'm just a tiny little fox. Tiny little fox. Oh no, too far away. Okay. 
This kind of reminds me of uh, a game I used to play a lot when I was little. I love this game. It's an old PS2 game uh, called Dog's Life. And I have just forgotten the dog's name, but I loved it. Um, it literally it only reminds me of that because it would kind of be the, the camera angle was kind of like this, and you'd be running around as a dog. Um, My friends would laugh about that night and talk about how crazy it was. And I laughed along, pretending it didn't bother me. But it did. I imagined my friends growing old in the bush, unable to find that thrill in those godforsaken ice fields. It's like those mountains were a literal wall, keeping me from leaving, where all I would have to look forward to are lumber yards and evening beers. I had to climb over. That was my only goal for a long time. I appreciate that. So I am um, finally getting a house, well, an apartment uh, up here, outside of my hometown. Because uh, yeah, I just can't. Li I just couldn't live in my hometown. Um, I just feel trapped. If there was some way I could take my love of drawing and turn it into a way of escape. Nothing would make me happier. Is that a fox? Is that a fo uh, I wanted wolf. to create instead of tearing trees down. I wanted to move to the lower 48, not because I hated it there in Alaska, but I hated the idea of it. It's like all of that spite inside me had created this monster which followed me around my whole teenage years. Mm. I put so much energy into doing what others didn't expect of me. Why did I do that? There's one fact you're forgetting, though. If you didn't have that fire in you, we probably would have never met. You're absolutely right. I'm sure I saw something up there. Maybe the destination is all that matters in the end. But then why am I awake? Why am I seeing this fox go on her journey? And why can't I stop thinking about my dad? I'm really worried about how this story ends. No, 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 I want to explore more. I want to have a look around the geezers. This is nice. I'm guessing next will be like an autumnal scene. Uh, it seems to be going through the um, seasons. It's a nice crunching sound when you're walking on the rocks. That's cool. Everything's cool. I I I like. I'm very easily pleased. But I like this style of games. So I seem to have to go this way, so I'm going to go explore this way. Because there's stuff over there too. So I'm guessing this guy's, yeah, he, he becomes an architect. Oh, this is, this is cool. Yeah, it's just, oh, I love the visuals. It, it is just adorable. Said the simple, like, 
there's no lines. It's like there's no line art kind of thing. It's almost just like the fill colors uh, and and the high contrast. I I love it. from me what are you oh oh I got something I don't think I saw any in in the other seasons Pretty though. Mm. It's slightly harder to see, um, like all of the, the little star checkpoints here compared to like the snow level. Is that thing over there? Is that the thing I just got? I don't know. Maybe I have to dig there as well. Oh, there's a house. On our property, there were old abandoned pieces of a shed and car long left unused. <laughs> That's cool. <gasps> I used to ask him all the time who those people were left all this junk and I'm sure he got so tired of hearing it that he made up some elaborate stories how a brown bear ate them and haunted the woods afterwards <laughs> yeah what's funny Death is parents. I think it made those people seem more real growing up thinking they were still hanging out like they couldn't say goodbye I used to tell my friends how I could swear I saw spirits move near the water and that always freaked them out I guess it didn't bother me because the way I saw it they were normal people with old cars and sheds, mm -hmm. just trying to figure out how to survive and be happy in the middle of nowhere. It was a cool thought that they didn't want to leave, but you know, I was a weird kid. Well, you had good company since those ghosts like living in a place where they were brutally devoured. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'm gonna go back over here because there's still that light in the sky. Yeah, the, the narrations are really nice. And they've got very soothing voices. Okay, no, it's just that thing. Okay. Uh, I've already got it, so. Yeah, there's more of that. 
no, the guys are still playing Destiny. Uh, I I just uh, I popped on there for some shenanigans, and I wanted to uh, just play a more chill game, something fitting the more Beltane vibes. <laughs> We're going to do a hop on tonight though. Okay, let's we'll go here first. Even at my most distant, at the times when I detested him the most, he That's kept reaching that. out. For a year straight, he asked me every week when we were going camping. I thought he was just dense. Eventually, to shut him up, I agreed. We carried out the worn lawn chairs from the garage and set up a cinder block campfire at the site we'd always used behind the house. We walked down the mountain path, talking in the warm sunshine we only got a couple months of the year. Those three obsidian rocks shimmered alongside the shore, almost like sparklers pressed against a dark oh, window. Oh, did that just open up? I'll never forget that wet stone on my feet. Or how those massive mm. mountains looked even bigger in the lake's reflection. I felt small, but grateful. No, no, it didn't. As the sun set, my dad found something I hadn't seen for a long time. The tree where I'd made my first carving when I was six. I hadn't even carved it. My dad had helped me, but I still called it my tree. Something about seeing my name there made me open up. And we talked about everything that night in that old camouflage tent. I told him how yeah, much I love sketching and design, and how it would be a dream to study architecture in Seattle. I told him how I didn't get along with my friends much anymore, but that I didn't mind being alone. He told me he was there for me, and he joked that if all he had to do was write my name on a tree to finally get me to talk, he would have left me carved logs with novels on them in front of my room every oh, morning. Oh, don't be dead. I don't know why it took don't me that dead. long to realize it. But it was then I knew how much he had sacrificed for me. I mean, his girlfriend or whatever was saying that uh, he'd see his dad again soon. So hopefully, everything works out okay. But yeah, you, you do grow apart. Or, you know, grow more distant from your friends, especially your childhood friends, because, like, you were kids together, and you, you grow up and you get different tastes and you change. Oh, oh go away. How do I... Oh, why can't I... There you go. Don't you love spam messages? Um, yeah, I was saying, like, it, it's so okay to grow apart from people and realise that you're different. There's a cave. I'm gonna go in the cave. My dad built a lot of stuff in his free time. Oh. If he wasn't watching fly I fishing or reading Tom Clancy novels, he was carving something. Tom Clancy. He made tons of bird houses. Mm -hmm. Not that he was into bird watching, but I think he really missed working and adding on to the home. If he couldn't afford the time to no. build onto our own house, it was just a rock. he would have like to settle cave. with watching birds move into their little homes. We kept an old mattress in the bed of that ugly yellow truck, so we would drive it deep into the woods and then watch the birds fly into their houses while the sun set. Stop insulting your Usually dad's taste in trucks! Usually it was accompanied by venison jerky or cold coke, but not
not a lot of talking, which is how we both liked it. Another baseball cap. First aid kit and a boat. That doesn't, um, I think that's fishing off a state, but that first aid kit, no, doesn't bode well. I love these massive, massive bushes. Makes you feel like a kid again, you can just hide under them. I doubt myself. And I shouldn't. No! There you go. Any more for any more? Yes. Okay. Slightly worried about the rocks there. Oh, I can fly apparently. <laughs> here there's a thing here anyway there's a thing there or is that just what I just got yes it is I thought I saw another light gate uh, I don't know what the, the little lights do. I don't know if, depending how many you get, you get a different ending or what. Um, I, I just like the little sounds they make.
in there. Just a cute little grove. Not a grove, a squatter rather. I know my names for things. I don't. Was eight this game is making me really sleepy. <laughs> Keyboard. I have one of these. My little Casio keyboard. Uh. Oh, it just hitch. I had the, the classic red one, which is pretty much pink by the time it got to me. Yes, the the beige computer that everyone had. I remember being the coolest person at school because we were one of the first people to get a computer, in, like in our house. Um, because my my dad got one from work. Um, like like he didn't steal it, and he he needed it for his job, so he got given one. Um, it was so cool. I've got a. Uh, I've downloaded like a bunch of games from like an em an emulator of games I used to play when I was little, uh, and I'm, I was gonna stream with my mum at some point. Like the the games we used to play together, like Read a Rabbit and stuff. Um, I may fall asleep. <laughs> we were happiest underneath the evergreens. We decided it was time to finally map out the hundreds of acres we lived on just to pass the time during the summer. Okay, he was only free in the evenings, so I would spend the day wasting time on dial-up internet and sketching, and then we would rush into the woods, pen and map in hand, before evening fell. Sometimes, the aurora borealis would cast a cold green glow on the mountainside, and we would finish our route underneath a twilight sky. Sometimes, I was lonely during those summer days, but there was comfort in the routine. A lot of teenagers aren't looking for the daily grind, though. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get out, to leave your childhood home. You wanted to progress, to make something of yourself. Yeah, you're right. That house. I'm sure it's the same as how I left it. Oh, um, why does it feel so different? I doubt you're the only adult to have looked back and asked that question. I must be missing one. Oh, there's some shinies over there. Okay. Yeah, I'm missing some. Oh wait, or is that just... Alright, there's definitely something shiny there. awesome uh, I think I've come the closest to I'll say building a computer uh, I got a pre well someone else had it custom built um, and I bought it from them and then I just like added a few things swapped out a few things uh, I I am the tech whiz of the family which is not very comforting to know <laughs> was it just the Sun coming through the leaves. It looked like there was something else over here. I have to be missing something. Oh, is this opened up now? Yes, it has. Okay.
Ooh, it's a wolf. It's like that scene in uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's the, the fox opposite the wolf. He goes... <laughs> There we go. The perpetrator stood nearby, unfazed, like nothing was wrong. My dad is dead, and he's never coming back, Rachel. I can tell you these stories, but I can never reminisce with him again. He can never hold a grandchild that we'll probably never be able to have. I can never talk to him again, and I'll never be able to say I'm sorry. Oh, that's a lot. Everything. In one. Okay, it's good that it lets you back up there. It's really hard to judge the distance with these stars. There we go. Yeah, I mean, fuck, de death is hard. Um, obviously. But... Especially when that there is like, in, in all relationships, there is that back and forth of, you know, you say things you regret to each other, you do things you regret, or you know, you you regret that you didn't do more things, and this and this and the other. Like you always think there's more time to to reminisce and to, you know, apologise for shit. It's not fun. Yes, I have fox stompies. Look at me jump. Guys, this is a very serious game.
So this is the first tree. I think it's called the first first tree or last tree. The first tree, uh, and it's a guy talking about uh, to his girlfriend or wife or something about this dream that he's been having, where he's a fox looking for uh, her cubs, and he's kind of uh, reminiscing and. Um, as we just found out, his dad has recently died. Um, so it's kind of about dealing with grief. But it's sweet. It's very cute. Um, I like the style of it. And yeah, it's... It's nostalgic. Dig. Okay. I need to go to bed. I just can't talk about this anymore. Good night. Oh, that's so sad. It is a little bit heavy, but it's it's really sweet at the same time. It's not like a depressing grief. It's, you know, just talking about stuff. And yeah, reminiscing is important. Next area Autumnal. I like autumn. Oh, I like this better. Oh, I oh, oh, I can stay here. Joseph. <gasps> wow. You can't be around. asleep feeling like this. I'm sorry for everything, and I know you need space, but I'm here for you. You don't need to feel so lost. Joseph, have I ever told you what my mother was like? Hold on a space now. Oh, we're about to go into her oh. we're about to go into her dream now? What's this? What's a deer? Put on a deer. You know what it's like not to have a mom at all. Oh, her paper cranes. You don't have it earlier. Helped me was watching the birds in the morning before the school bus came. <laughs> I thought that my mother was one of those birds, and it made me want to be free like her. My mom taught me how to fold origami cranes while she was in the hospital, so I told myself I would fold one every day until I could fly myself. That's sweet. I think we both have always loved animals, and for me, that love started with a dog. Sometimes this Rottweiler would come up to our property line and wait at the fence for me, but only once in a while. I was sure to check every day immediately after school, and it usually ended in disappointment. I would even steal money from my passed out dad just so I could buy these off-brand dog biscuits. Even when she did stop by, she never went beyond the fence. Why was she so scared? I think my dad was the opposite of your dad in almost uh. every way, except he was in the military as well. He coped with alcohol of every kind. The trailer started falling apart, he got angry, and I withdrew. More and more I became the weird, quiet kid who made lots of origami birds and carried dog biscuits around. I think we were pretty similar when it came to being the weird kids. And that same sincerity in college was one of the reasons I was so drawn to you. Life oh, got worse pretty. and worse. And at one point, I really didn't think I could survive another day with my soul still intact. I had no real friends, let alone neighbors, since we lived in the middle of nowhere. I should have talked to my teacher, but I was scared what he would do if he found out. As I waited for the school bus one morning, I walked around until I found something in an abandoned shed. 
something I can't put into words. I summoned courage I didn't know I had, and I broke into my dad's room and found the key to the shed where he had locked my bike. I'll never forget that feeling. It was the wind rushing by my ears as the sun rose over fields of wheat. I was flying for the first time. I biked as far as my legs could take me until I found a house that felt friendly and that felt like home. Those strangers helped me in so many ways. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have found my foster family. And if it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't have met you. That's sweet. And I've realized what this kind of reminds me of. It gives me like Clanad after story vibes. Uh, if you've never watched Clanad uh, or Clanad After Story, do, but have a box of tissues with you. <laughs> I've watched it so many times and it's just sobbing every time, always. But it's like it's like the particles of light flying around and going through the memories and stuff. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh! Did I miss it? Oh no, those are just the islands of memories and oh, oh, this game. You have strength, Joseph, and you're not as alone as you think. It's all just so pointless. Just waiting for life to happen. It's like having the home I always wanted is cursed out of my reach. The thought of being a parent myself. How could I do that when I couldn't even be a good son? I'm sorry. I know you weren't a saying. bad son. Just you were just a kid. Work out. These quiet hours will turn into years. We'll wonder which roads passed us by. Then we'll forge a new road together. Besides, I discovered for myself that one fateful morning where any hopeful road leads to. There may be thorns in this, but. It always leads to the same thing. And what's that? <sighs> family. I'm so glad that you're part of my family, Rachel. And I'm glad you're part of mine. Hello. Hello. I love your ears. I love your ears. So cool. I say it all the time and I'll say it again. Family isn't always what you're born with uh, or by blood. It's sometimes it's by choice. In fact, a lot of it is by choice. I've got people in my, you know, blood family who I'm related to them by blood and that's it. And I've got people who I've just connected with over the years and they will always be my family. Um. Yes. Oh God, I have so many regrets over the stuff that I did when I was a kid. I was a demon child. Um, and a mess of a teenager but like I'm really close to my family and we can laugh about how bloody awful I was like kid kids are just kids they don't have to be perfect you know 
that's what part of growing up is about messing up and making mistakes. There's a mantra my mum always still does repeats to us, but she really honed it in when we were kids. Um, obviously, because you're so young and you misinterpret things. Like if she was angry with us, it was never. If she always said, you know, I may not like you right now because you know we just screaming matches. I hate you, blah blah blah. Um, so you know, I may not like you right now, but I will always love you, and that's the important difference. Yeah, kids, family members can do stuff that really drives you nuts in. Um, but you're still there for each other at the end of the day. Like, we can be screaming at each other and saying not so very nice things. And then one of us needs each other and we're there. And my brother and I at the moment, we are not getting along right now. Um, he came up a c couple of weeks ago and there were many screaming Talk matches between the two of us would be waiting for her at the first tree um, she was almost there I like this. the rain cascaded onto the jade valley where the entrance to the tree was <gasps> Shit. life was protected there because that's where life began it was now only a mother and a daughter left items from my life still dotted the ground as she moved closer to her destination and destiny destiny um, but yeah, like me and my brother at the moment, we are not getting along in a social way. Um, but, you know, I knew he was pretty low because, um, you know, he, he's uh, been trying to find a job and there just hasn't been like any jobs in uh, at the moment. But he got one the other day, woo! Um, but no, like he was really low, so I called him because... Yeah, even though we're wanting to rip each other's throats out at the minute, he's my big brother and we're going to be there for each other. There's nothing up here. Okay. I can just go to this one then. At the end of high school, I felt something I hadn't felt in a long time. Drive. I looked into the best architecture schools on the west coast and got a dose of reality when looking at other students' portfolios and the high cost of tuition. I still wanted to be something, to be the next Alvaro Siza, and to make those thousands of sketches worth something in my grand history. But now even an internship sounds impossible. Siza helped me understand how essential emotion is in architecture, and he also said light is the real composer of space. I like to think these glints of light, like not finding a job, or even a strange dream about a fox, are something I should be thankful for, even if the illuminated space is something I'm less than comfortable with.
for one of my little cousins. So he's decided. How old is he now? I think he's 11. Uh, he's decided he's going to be an architect. <laughs> uh, he's great. He's so driven with everything. And he's, his art is absolutely amazing. He, he's obsessed with uh, like Captain Underpants and stuff. And he makes his own comics. And he was showing me some of them. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, did you did you trace some of these things? And no, no, he doesn't trace any of them. He's, he's like, almost like a photocopier. <laughs> uh, he's really good. He does love Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> he, he makes, like, amazing designs and stuff in Minecraft. Um, like, kudos to him. He's actually fantastic. Is that a shiny thing up there? Or is that just the light reflecting? I don't know. That's just the, the light, okay. Oh, it's just the ambient noises. It just makes me so sleepy. What's this? Oh, it's one of these drills. Yeah. Pillar drill. I'm really bad at um, designing things in Minecraft. I'm like, I have an idea. I'm going to do a thing. And then it just like looks terrible. I see someone else's like, idea or, you know, take on a similar thing. I'm like, ha ha, ha ha, I can never show anyone mine. Oh, nether netherrack. Ooh. Ooh. I like making log cabins in, in Minecraft. My dad was super supportive with my college plans. To a point. Local man? Oh, local man killed. Okay. okay. Until this terrible accident happened. I guess a forklift flipped over due to a bad axle and it crushed one of the workers there. My dad didn't mm. eat for days. Even though he wasn't directly involved, it devastated him. Oh, yeah. Not only did it hurt the business, but it just freaked him out. He would talk in his sleep muttering things about firing people and saying sorry. One fateful day, he approached me, said that since my school search wasn't going well, I should finally be a man and take over the family business. He said one day he was going to die and that all of his work, sacrifice, and even that man's life would be wasted in vain. I just lost it. Teenage me just exploded at the thought. I screwed up. I said things I shouldn't have. He was having a crisis, and I pretty much spit in his face. But again, he would have forgiven you because he's your father and you're his son. Ed, are you forklift certified? Oh. I want to look over there. Oh, really? <laughs> Ooh, 
love stuff down there. Yeah, that's the next area. I don't want to go there. Although, scary wolf. Although here I think the wolf represents grief. You ain't slick! Was that the last time you talked to him? No, I called on holidays, and he would call on my birthday. I guess we acted like nothing ever happened, oh, which God. was stupid. He didn't want to ask about his lumber yard, and I'm sure he didn't want to ask about my job search. I never went back and visited. I think the last conversation we had was about what movies we had seen, and what exactly a best boy is in the credits. I thought he would be here so much longer. There you go. I think one of the last texts I had to my nana, and my phone deleted all of my texts, so I was really upset. Um, but yeah, it's like some of my last ones were were blowing her off. She she was seeing if um. You know if she if she could come round, because I I was still really sick at the time. Uh, and so she was coming around and looking after me a lot. Um. And I just I just didn't want to be around people. I was so like embarrassed about being sick, uh, and about needing people all the time. Uh. And she wanted to know if I wanted to go and come to the shops with her or something like that. And I was just blowing her off. Um, yeah, like, it's really hard to see all the what ifs and how you could have done more and stuff. But people don't put as much focus on what they did do, I don't think. Like when it, when it comes to to dealing with death, I mean I'm I'm super close to my nana, uh, batty as a fruitcake, uh, absolutely fits the stereotype of a mad Welsh woman. Gets my and we had some like amazing memories and did some awesome things together. And yeah, I'm sad that I didn't spend as much time. Like, um, there were some traditional um, Welsh food that we wanted to make together. She was um, she made a really nice stuffed lamb's heart, uh, and she was always going to teach me how to do that. We were going to start learning because she knew some Welsh. Uh, she's from South Wales. So she knew some Welsh and she taught me a little bit, but we were going to learn it properly together. Like we never got around to doing that. Uh, we were going to spend some more time together that summer, um, and and we didn't. But that also doesn't take away all the time we did spend together. It's really nice apparently. Um, I've got some lava bread and stuff to stuff it with. Um, my uncle Adam only lives like 30 minutes away so 
apparently he loves it. My, my nana, you know, she ate it, but she wasn't, you know, particularly enamoured with it. Uh, apparently it was his favourite, so she made it for him every time she went to visit. Uh, but yeah, he's not actually far from where I live now, so I'll have to ask him, you know, what was the recipe she used? Uh, and do you trust my cooking enough to try some yourself? Okay, I'm at the beginning. Right, I can leave now. Yeah, where the trees turn yellow. Yeah. That's a health hazard. Ultimate dream is to have like a proper workshop. Just at the bottom of my garden have all my proper tools and stuff I'd love to actually you know make some of my own furniture that's the goal I've made a stool before it wasn't very good um, <laughs> uh, big shit yeah More like an outhouse kind of thing. Um. Yeah. I, l I just love making stuff. I oh, know it isn't, wasn't around there. Oh, Question mark. We do have a load of tools um, at my parents and the garage is pretty much my workshop but it's not very big and but I can't go ham with it because like we store everything in the garage so uh, it's a bitch to clean up so I, I really want to just make some more stuff Maybe I'll make a stool for my new place. A new stool. I can put some plants on it or something. And there's my wolf cub. Uh, my, my wolf cub? My, my fox cub. <gasps> Our tail's still working. In the distance, the first tree illuminated the wasteland. She couldn't go home anymore. She did the only thing she was capable of. Moving forward. My dad died alone in the middle of the wilderness. I should have been talking to him more. I should have done a lot of things differently. Oh. If the first tree on earth brought life with it, if it taught the birds to sing and fly and showed saplings how to grow, what could it do for us? There was a letter I received. 
received yesterday from a name I didn't recognize with a quote I can't stop thinking about. Death is not the opposite of life, but a part of it. More and more, I'm realizing one important truth. Each of us have our own journey to the first tree, but sometimes I'm not sure I'm ready to take that first step. You already have my love. That, that concept of um, death being a part of life is very intrinsic to uh, my, my belief system, which is why I talk very openly about death. Um, yeah, it is kind of scary, the thought of, you have a limited time here, but it's about making the most of, making the most of it. And accepting that things do end and that's kind of what makes it beautiful in that in this small time we have on earth knowing that it ends and that there is heartbreak and death and grieving that we still choose to love each other and we still choose to make memories and create things even you know despite all the shit um, death is to be accepted and, you know, revered because without, like, that break-off point, there's no comparison. First Tree Awakens and Jenny asks if there's one last message the fox wants to tell her children. She replies back and says, There you go. I'm being really soppy and I don't care. It's Beltane. It's... That's the, that's the point of it. I guess her journey was over. But I have no idea. It was only a dream. A distraction. I don't think dreams normally bring back to memory so many important feelings. Maybe it was just a dream, but it was also a gift. Yeah, I suppose. But tomorrow we're getting on a plane to the last place on Earth I want to be. The only person that would have made the trip worth it is gone. You're going to see him and be with him one last time before you say goodbye. I have one last quote for you by Emerson sealed in an imaginary letter from me to you. It is the secret of the world that all things subsist and do not die, but only retire a little from sight and afterward return again. Go to sleep, my love. We have a big day tomorrow, but I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Good night, Rachel. Good night, Joseph. That's really sweet. <laughs> I've only been laughing so much to just stop myself from crying. <laughs> uh, did it be credits or something? Six months later. Okay. There's more. There's more to the game. Oh, okay. I have a reticle. I thought that was it. There may be, this may be like a, a game game. Oh, geez, this is very. Hey, wait, Rachel, put the put the covers on me. The Book of Mormon. What's that? 
something and something. Lovely. Nope, I can't see that. Do we have a baby? Is this why we come give me here? I love my two dimensional beer can. Um Oh my face is a bit Who who has their bathroom laid out like this? So they've moved. They've moved into uh, this house. Is the front door? Yeah. Okay. So, so that is such. I mean, okay. Granted, there's bugger all here, uh, but this is such a safety precaution. So they've moved into this house. He said his dream is always to to live in like a proper house, rather than the crappy apartment that that they had. Having a baby. This is ghastly, by the way. Okay, this is great. I I am actually contemplating doing this on my ceiling, <laughs> and I'm not joking. Um, this paint is ghastly. No. 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 Especially with whatever the hell they're doing here. Nah. -uh. Nah, nah. And why have they got stuff on the walls when they haven't finished painting them? Just, just. This guy's an architect. What? Well, uh, architect, not designer, I guess. And then storage cupboard. Okay, cool. There's no light switches in this house either. That's the design flaw. Yes, we get it. You live in Arkansas. Oh. <laughs> the, the light is stopping me from going near it. That's a cool view. That's a cool view. This is cute. Little fireplace there. Like the fox. I had this TV. <laughs> Yeah, guys, you need to do something about the design of this place. Uh, can I... Oh. Just gonna go out. Can I sit? Sit. Okay. Where is this going to fit? But maybe this is a fixer upper. Oh that's, oh, that's gorgeous though. I'd love to go to Alaska. It it does look so beautiful. And I know this is the game, but I mean in general, it look it looks gorgeous anyway. Um, in every picture that I've seen, it looks crisp. You can't double jump as a human. Imagine. Jeez, what's that? Bunny. Ooh. Ah, yeah, there's the purple and yellow truck now. Is this your dad's place? It might. No, no. The, his dad's place looked different. Um. Oh, I can. I can run. Okay. Thank God. 
<laughs> it could, but I hope it doesn't. Oh, that's the... Oh, this is where we started. Because that um, tent was underneath the snow and I made the joke about the day at Love Pass incident. Because I'm funny. Whoops. And I think. Yeah, that's the edge of the property line. What's this? Uh -oh. Okay. God, imagine living here. Hey, there's a no trespasser sign, and this was the gate that I was jumping all over. The fox was telling you your future and your past. Very funny. I I love to live in like the wilderness like this. Maybe within you know like thirty minute drive or something of like the town or you know I not fussed about villages but you know a town so I can go to the shops and stuff. Um, I'm not completely secluded from society. Uh, Um, uh, is that an axe? Yeah. That I I am kind of a people person. I like being around people, but uh, I need my own space. Uh, I I am very much a person that I I need to be able to have that retreat. Now that is a burnt up car. What was that? Ubu, was this? Okay, I think I've been around the entire property. If I'm looking for closure, can I hurry up and find it? Or a fox? Am I looking for a fox? I've already been here! Why is there anybody to come back? Yes, I know. You're in a nice warm bed with your wife. It's the wolf, kill it! Kill the wolf! Oh, is, is that the fox? Is it? Is it a spirit now? Is it a white fox? Because it, you know, is it the tree? Am I the fox cub? And he's my dad? This is my dad.
Also, I'm keeping up good pace to be running after a fox. Like, they go fast. I suppose I am running downhill. <laughs> no! Joseph deserves happiness and forgiveness for himself. He needs to forgive himself. I'm really short. Not a word. were actually forget me not then and I was about to get really emotional. <laughs> forget me not some of my favourite flowers. Um, because of the whole adage of you know that they, they grow on the graves of those who um, people know people don't visit them anymore so that they'll never be forgotten. and everything is very important to me. So. <laughs> I'm a little bit macabre. Oh, Fox, slow down. Oh, now I ran out of breath. My dad, Joseph's dad, said that if he could just carve words in a tree to make things better with himself, between each other. Oh! Oh! Yeah, because he said earlier that, um, yeah, his dad said, if only I could fix all of our arguments, all of our problems, just by carving some, some words into a tree. Oh! Maybe! That would be really cool! Um... Yeah, so it does. That is really cute. Uh, okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay. 
Hello. Oh, there's licensed music. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Uh, apparently, there's licensed music in there. Um. Hello, please. I'm trapped here. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to force it to close. Um, but that was a lovely game. And held, it held similar messages and values for the theme of today, anyway. Um, thank you for tuning in and crying with me. <laughs> my heart uh yeah it was that was a really sweet game i've i've dropped it in my discord under games played so if anyone wants to have a look at it i think it was free i can't remember might not have been but anyway it was a fantastic game uh i'll be on later tonight around nine o'clock we're gonna do some drunk destiny raids so that'll be fun come and tune in for that in the meantime I'm going to go have a nap because, as I said, I'm boring. Uh, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye!